Hello there and welcome to the series of videos that's going through the content of A-level maths. Here we're looking at how we would calculate the gradient on a curved line using differentiation. So what can we say about how we would calculate the gradient of this line here? Uh, what we would have to be is a bit more specific because the gradient changes as the um, values of x uh, differ. So if your x value was up here, your gradient would be very negative. Or if your x value was up here, then your uh, gradient would be very positive. Or if your gradient was worked out down here, your gradient would be zero. So the gradient changes for this graph as it goes through uh, its curve. So what we're going to look to do is find a formula that links the equation of the curve to what its gradient is. How can we work out the gradient on this curve here? Okay. So what we're going to do then is we're going to look at how we would estimate the gradient using a straight line on this graph here. So what we'll do is we'll select two coordinates that feature on this curve here. And what we'll do then is we'll do a bit of difference in y divided, divided by difference in x. But we'll try and make these coordinates here as close to each other as possible so that we get an accurate prediction of what the gradient is going to be. What we're doing here is we're estimating the gradient so far. So what we'll do is we'll select this coordinate down here as our starting coordinate, x, and the y coordinate will be f of x. And a coordinate up here that's going to be at h, uh, x plus h, so the original coordinate added on some small amount, h, and then f of x plus h, some small amount, h. So remember that you can work out the y coordinate just by plugging in the x coordinate into your function. That's why we're using f of x as the y coordinate. So what we'll do here now is we'll look at the difference in y divided by the difference in x. So with these two coordinates here, it's f of x plus h minus f of x. And for the difference in x value, it's uh, x plus h take away x, which will just leave us with h. And what we'll do is we'll make h smaller and smaller and smaller until we get a very accurate prediction of what its gradient is going to be. So what we can say here then is effectively the difference in y over the difference in x. Uh, this means a uh, change in y divided by a change in x is equal to f of x plus h minus f of x divided by h. So let's look at uh, what this means for the gradient. So as h starts to tend towards 0, uh, it's going to look like this. And now we introduce what we call a limit. And a limit is going to help us approximate this gradient more and more accurately because h is now going to start to be tending towards 0. So this is the limit as h tends towards 0. So let's take, for example, the x squared curve, where the gradient changes all the way along the graph. So what we can do now is we can use the um, estimation for the gradient and substitute all the values in. So the limit as f of x plus h minus f of x divided by h is going to be uh, x plus h squared minus x squared all over h and now expand in the brackets what we'll get is x squared plus 2xh plus h squared minus x squared all over h. Now we can cancel out the x squared term here at the front and the back of the fraction here and now we'll look at dividing through by h so simplifying that value so the limit as h tends towards 0 is 2x plus h. Now what's going to happen here is we're going to take the limit of these individual components now. The limit as h tends towards 0 of 2x, well because h doesn't feature in this function here, that's still going to be 2x. And the limit of h as h tends towards 0 is just going to be 0 because h is going to tend towards 0 and get very, very small. So what we can say here now is that the method that we're going to use to estimate the gradient of the x squared curve is 
dy by dx, which is our notation for the gradient, equals 2 times x. So, no matter, so if we take the x value of 6, the gradient at that point is going to be 12 um, through this method here. So this little formula at the top here is what is important for you to write down and make sure you remember. It's f of x plus h minus f of x all divided by h. And then you use whatever function you're given to substitute in the values at the top here, expand your brackets if you need to, and then divide by h. When it comes to this part down here, this is also a little tricky part of this question. Um, if it doesn't have a h in it, if this part of the expression doesn't have a h in it, then that expression just remains as it is. If it does have a h in it, then it disappears because h tends towards zero. So, this is the key point then. So if, x, if y equals x squared, dy by dx is equal to 2x. This is the gradient function, um, so we can work, plug in any value of x and work out the gradient at that point. So if we want to calculate the gradient of the curve uh, y equals x squared at the coordinate 3, 9, then we just plug in the value for x equals 3, and then we get the value of 6. Okay, so we get the value 6 as the gradient. So the gradient at this point 3 is 6. Okay, so a little question. How can they use this in a question and ask you about it? So a point A with coordinate 4, 16 lies on the curve with the equation y equals x squared. Uh, at point A, the curve of the gradient is g. Uh, show that g equals the limit as h tends towards 0 of 8 plus h. Well, we're going to use the formula here. So we're going to use f of x uh, we're going to use f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. And we're going to use the value for x as 4, and we're still going to keep in that h as our expression there. So uh, it's going to be the limit as h tends towards 0 of 4 plus h squared. Now this is because the function that we're working with here is x squared. And then minus 4 squared. Let's expand the brackets now, so we're going to get 16 plus 8h plus h squared minus 16. The 16s will cancel, and we divide through by h. This should be a h here, and we get the limit as h tends towards 0 of 8 plus h, which is what we're looking for in part a. So it's just really an application of this formula here. So you should be able to go into an exam and use this straight off the bat, given whatever function you've got as your f of x and whatever coordinate you've got as your value for x. Part b is to use the value of g. Well, taking this expression here and taking the individual parts, as h tends towards 0, the limit of 8 is just going to be 8, and the limit of h is just going to be 0. So it's the gradient at this point is just going to be 8. Okay. Right, so your turn then. Pause the video and have a go at this question. Right, okay, then well done for having a go at this question. So the first thing we need to do here is set up what the differential is doing. It's taking the limit as h tends towards 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. And what are we substituting into this formula now? Well, we're substituting in the fact that the function of x is x cubed this time. So we're going to have a slight bit more rearranging to do here. Um, and the x value here is going to be minus 2. So let's substitute these values in to the differential here. So it's going to be uh, minus 2 plus h cubed minus, um, minus 2 cubed all over h. Now let's think about what minus 2 cubed, minus 2 plus h cubed is. It's minus 2 plus h times minus 2 plus h times minus 2 plus h. So we'll have to do a little bit of expanding here. So it's going to be 4 minus 4h four plus 
h squared, and this is going to be expanded with another minus 2 plus h, so that's going to give us minus 8 plus 4h plus 8h um, minus 4h squared minus 2h squared um, plus h cubed. Right, so now all of this is going to go on the top of our limit here. So it's going to be the limit of um, minus 8 and then it would be plus 12h and then it would be minus 6h squared and it would be plus h cubed um, and that would be a minus, minus h, so that would be plus 8 over h. Okay, so we can cancel out these plus or minus 8s, and what we'll do as well is we'll cancel out the h's uh, from the top and the bottom. So it's going to be the limit as h tends towards 0 of 12 minus 6 h plus h squared. Oh, good, that's exactly what we're looking to show. Perfect. Okay, part B, to deduce the value of g. Well, in this case here, g is going to be the value 12, because as h tends towards 0, 6 times 0 is going to be 0, and um, 0 squared is going to be 0. So it's just going to be 12 um, as the gradient at x equals minus 2. Alright then, thanks very much for watching, so have plenty of practice on exercise 12b on page 261. Uh, make sure you persevere through those difficult questions and ask your teacher if you need any help. Thanks for watching.